I review a lot of odd little indie games on this channel, and in a lot of the videos, I point out that the game is probably not for everyone. This time, I was invited to review a game that is, it turns out, not for me. But that doesn't mean it's a bad game. If you come here to find new games that are wholesome and relaxing and chill, then Mayhem in Single Valley is not for you. It's hectic, stressful, and difficult. But if you like a challenge that will get your blood pumping, you might enjoy it. There's also a demo available if you want to try before you buy. Before I continue, a brief disclaimer. I've only managed to play about two hours of the game, which I'm told is six to eight hours long, so my review is based only on the first quarter or so of the game. It's also based on a pre-release version, so some things may change in the final release. You're about to leave home to move to the big city when a mysterious shadowy figure dumps toxic waste into the water, which starts mutating the local flora and fauna into dangerous and contagious monsters. They run around infecting the other creatures in the world right before your eyes, and for some reason, you are being blamed for it. A squirrel steals your backpack, including your plane ticket out of here, and you have no choice but to go after it to recover your stuff, and get to the root of the problem, save the town, and clear your name. Based on the trailer, I expected the gameplay to be arcadey and sandboxy, similar to something like Streets of Rogue, where you have goals to achieve but a lot of creative freedom to do it. But Mayhem in Single Valley is actually very linear. In each area, you have a task to accomplish or a simple puzzle to solve in order to get to the next area. And the entire time, you're being chased by purple monsters, which can kill you in a single hit. When you die, you reload at the last checkpoint. There are quite a few of these, but it still takes a few seconds to load each time, and rather than teleporting you to that spot, it resets to the state the game was in when you reached it. So if, for example, you were in the middle of changing inventory when it saved in the background, you'll have to make all those changes again each time you die until you hit the next checkpoint. You can't actually fight the many enemies trying to hunt you down, but you can distract them briefly. Each creature has a specific item it will target instead of you, so if a squirrel is after you, you can throw or drop a nut to keep it busy for a few seconds before it resumes the chase. I liked this system well enough at the start of the game, when there were only a few enemy types, but before too long I wound up overwhelmed. To select a specific item, you have to scroll through your inventory slots one at a time, all the while trying to dodge attacks. If there's a squirrel, and a rabbit, and a snake all chasing me, I simply don't have the multitasking ability to remember what type of food each of them wants, find it in my inventory, and drop or throw it before they catch me. As a result, I rarely wound up actually using these items during play, instead choosing to simply dodge attacks as I went, and this probably made the game harder than it was meant to be. I would have enjoyed the system better if I could have assigned hotkeys for specific items, rather than having to scroll through every item in my inventory to make my selection. My least favorite part of the game, so far, is the upgrade system. You buy upgrades with duct tape, which you obtained by finding and rescuing your clones. I have two problems with this system. First off, the clones are often hidden away, and rescuing them is frequently a puzzle in and of itself. This means that only the most skilled players will be able to rescue them all and buy the upgrades, which make the game easier. I would have preferred for the upgrades to be tied to something accessible to all players, like checkpoints or experience points of some kind. The second issue is that I'm, I'm not sure what the upgrade system adds to the game as a whole. At the start of the game, you're extremely slow. And I mean, extremely slow. There's a weird psychological disconnect between fleeing for your life from a mob of enemies and feeling like you're moving in slow motion. And I'm definitely not the only person who feels this way. Their Steam discussion forum had several threads asking about the movement speed even before release. Where is the run button? Have I missed something? Why do I move so slowly? The devs have responded to these concerns by pointing out that you can upgrade your movement speed over the course of the game, and that in fact, thanks to similar feedback, that they've already increased the starting speed by 20% over their original plans. I can't imagine playing this game where you move 20% slower than you already do. To me, it seems like the speed is artificially made slower in order to give you something better to upgrade to, but then wouldn't the game be more fun overall if they just did away with the upgrades and let you move fast from the start? Aside from the movement speed, you can upgrade your inventory so you can carry more items, letting you keep more types of bait, but making you scroll through even more choices when trying to find the item you need, hold additional shields, which give you an extra hit before you die, and improve the functionality of your slingshot, which eventually lets you shoot bait further and aim for specific enemies. 
But since the game is so linear, it feels like an odd choice to me to have this type of progression tied to your ability to find secrets. I'd rather have the larger backpack and extra shield holder be something you find over the course of the game or buy in a shop, without requiring any special effort on the part of the player to find secrets. This is especially the case because the game already has collectibles. Lots of them. You collect tapes so you can change the music while you play, plus a ton of secret hidden items which are just there for the completionists and collectors to seek out. If you like finding all the things in a game, Mayhem in Single Valley has got just so many things for you to find. Aesthetically speaking, I really like the pixel art visual style, and the music is simple but fun, and since you get an increasing variety of music to choose from as you play, it doesn't get too repetitive. I also appreciate that you can change the music sound and UI levels individually in the settings. In terms of accessibility, although this is a difficult game that not every player will be able to succeed at, I want to applaud the devs for making all the controls rebindable to any combination of keyboard, mouse, and gamepad, which opens up a lot of options both for disabled gamers who need a unique setup, and for all gamers who want to be able to set up a more comfortable or more challenging control scheme. Oh, and yes, you can pet the dog. If you're in the market for a hectic, challenging game with a retro style, Mayhem in Single Valley might be the game for you. But if, like me, this isn't quite your cup of tea, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more indie game reviews. Thank you for watching, and a huge thank you to my patrons whose support makes videos like this one possible. If you want to see your name in the credits, as well as other bonuses like private game servers, ebooks, free copies of my games, and early access to my Minecraft adventure maps, check out patreon.com secretfoxfire for more info. Rewards start at just $1 a month. See you next time.